we're entering a so-called second space age. The military is what started space. There's definitely an element of military and security competition in space. We are going to have the Air Force and we are going to have the Space Force. Space, the military's vital frontier. Space has come to dominate our military operations. Thousands of satellites encircle the Earth. Encrypted battlefield commands are fed through them. Global positioning satellites help guide forces in the battle space. Quite simply, space has become a critical part of our military infrastructure and one that has to be defended. There are around 4,600 satellites in Earth orbit, but only around 2,000 of those are operational. We know that because there is a special registry of any objects sent into outer space, but countries don't have to declare anything sent for military purposes. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. At the National Space Centre in Leicester, these are the remnants of the first chapter of our exploration of the stars. And now the MOD is faced with a new mission to try and stake its claim up there. At the moment, uh, we're entering a so-called second space age. There's definitely an element of military and security competition in space. Um, so different countries are developing more military capabilities with regards to space, especially Russia, China, and the United States. So all those countries have elaborate uh, military space uh, satellites infrastructure and constellations now which enable their modern military forces to do what they do. But also they have um, emergent anti-satellite weapon systems as well ranging from um, anti-satellite jamming systems to lasers based on the ground or earth-based um, missiles that shoot up into space to shoot at, down a satellite through ramming or high explosive. I think it's really important to remember that the military is what started space. You know, rocketry technology, you know, ever since it was invented by the ancient Chinese scientists that invented gunpowder, it was used in military applications. You know, initially as weapons to cause harm and damage, and then after that, using it to explore and realizing that this was fantastic technology that could be used not to upset other people, but actually take us into space to explore things, to find new things to explore new places and yeah I think they're intrinsically you know if it wasn't for the military applications we'd never be at the position we are now when it comes to space exploration. The RAF already have 500 men and women working on space operations, many at RAF Filingdales which has spent decades looking for threats from space. Air Command at High Wycombe has now assumed responsibility for command and control of all UK military space operations. A hundred more people will join the team over the next five years. The UK does have its own military space capabilities. They're quite limited, but they're not insignificant. So the major one is the Skynet communication satellite system. So this provides the UK MOD and the UK government with secure um, uh, wideband uh, satellite systems to communicate with uh, military forces and intelligence assets and uh, embassies all around the world. And it's currently operated by private contractors, but the MOD has said that for the next generation, it will be brought back in-house, so we will once again have uniformed personnel operating British military satellites uh, for the next generation of Skynet. Um, also, the RAF um, operates RAF Filingdales, which detects missile launches um, as part of the American Early Warning System, um, but also it can track space objects as well. So it's very useful for the space situational awareness capability, so to know what exactly is flying around in space, including satellites and junk. The Ministry of Defence recently announced it's given £1 million to try and boost the British satellite antenna industry. It's hoped it will provide more accurate and frequent satellite images. But Brexit has caused a big headache and cast doubt over the UK being part of the EU's military-grade signal of the Galileo satellite system, despite spending £1.2 billion towards it. 
the space domain has risen high up the agenda in the United States, American President Donald Trump making a big announcement to set up a sixth branch of the U.S. military. I'm hereby directing the Department of Defense and Pentagon to immediately begin the process necessary to establish a space force as the sixth branch of the armed forces. That's a big statement. We are going to have the Air Force and we are going to have the Space Force. Trump's Space Force isn't as new or dangerous as it seems. Essentially what it is is rearranging the deck chairs of what the US Air Force is already doing about managing space services. So it's not going to be putting troops in space. It's not going to be developing any new massive capabilities. It's, it's a bureaucratic reshuffle and perhaps trying to develop a more specific military space culture so that perhaps there's more independence within the military space officers that don't get dominated by the air power culture within the US Air Force. It's unclear whether future battles will be fought in space. Maybe those sci-fi scenarios are a long way off. But it is the fight for technology in space and utilising satellites to defend us on Earth that is the challenge right now.